It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome. You're tuning in. Because in this video, it's time to take a close look at another game box. This one is called the G11. So this package have been busted up absolutely crazy if you look at this. But what are we going to get? That is always the question with these things. I must say like, we have reviewed a lot of these devices here on the channel. So if you're just new, so consider subscribing, hit that little bell because you missed out a lot of different packages from China. So basically this is more like an Android box lookalike thing, but they try and just improve it. So this is a 128 gigabyte, here you can see the, U, the AU version. Yeah, Android 9, this should come with it. Like when you're looking at descriptions, like kind of weird, you know, it makes no sense whatsoever. But let's see what's inside the box. We do get like the plastic fantastic over here with the box. The first thing I'm noticing is like it feels quite heavy, so I'm curious is this any good or is it just a piece of metal inside? They'd love to do that. 12 volt power supply is needed. Really love the look of this thing. Made of fully plastic. But let's take a close look what's more inside the box. Alright, so we do get ourselves a card made over here with an SD card. I don't know what kind of an SD card this is. Oh, this is the 128. Okay, that's interesting. Did he even like put it in? All right, so we have the power supply, cheap to the cheap one, the controller, remote because it's an Android device, HDMI cable, and another controller. Ah, and of course, the toilet paper metal deluxe edition because it's a very deluxe glossy one. Okay, so they also sell it like a game stick because those things are like absolutely like crazy how many of these things there are. Okay, so here we have like some information about the specifications. The parameters. So this thing or one of those things are the G5, G7, G9. So there's a full lineup. I did review a couple of them. Comes with the Gore-Tex A9, 2 gigabyte of RAM. So that's interesting. Most of them had like 1 gigabyte in the past. Here it supports like all kinds of emulators up to PlayStation Portable. Mm, got a 3.5 earphone, stereo headphone out. It's also something you don't see very often. And then we have like an AVI function, but that doesn't work always. Uh, and overall, like, cool that we could use an headphone, but besides that, there's not a lot of information. It even shows over here we can play some Sega Saturn. <laughs> kind of funny, like, show, they're showing here a PlayStation controller and they're showing here an Xbox controller. That's some freaking confusing things. Alright, so the controllers are okay quality. I must say they have an okay D-pad. I must say that normally we do have, like, the cheap to the cheap controllers, but that comes without any rumble. Yeah, it's okay. Let's I will give it like an maybe six, seven out of nine. With like the battery compartment. Let's put some batteries in. And let's take a close look at this bad boy. So at the side we're going to get ourselves two USB ports for connecting some hardware. At the back we're going to get an HDMI out and then we go get an AV out and yeah the AV out take consideration they don't always work with Amy Alec. Then we do have like the RG45 LAN function, the input for 12 volt. The on and off switch, yeah, that is also not common with these things. Nothing over here, and nothing over here. So, but that explains one thing. Why there is a freaking card reader with an SD card in it. Normally they always like add the SD card with it, with the software, so you can just basically boot up and add your stuff. But guess what? This is a completely different way to play. And I don't know if I'm going to like this. So what we think what we need to do is like, we need to plug this thing in. So we need to use up one freaking port. We need to plug in the SD card. And then we can boot up the software. Okay, that is pretty damn messed up if you ask me. Okay, it doesn't even go in all the way. Alright, so let's boot it up and let's see if it's even going to boot up. Everything seems to be working like it should be. So it takes quite a long time, but the first thing that we'll see is the game box intro. It's a modified MUL like I'm guessing it is. And the next thing that we're going to get is this wicked intro with all kinds of characters that we maybe know of. And just to be honest, like, I, I don't know where the intro is from. And yeah, that's basically what we're going to get. It takes quite a lot of time, like say a minute or so, before we're going to be booted up the system in general. But that's it. So with the first generation of Android boxes that were modified with ME Alec, also called Super Console X, so what you can do with those things in combination with this one is not going to be a big of a difference because the hardware itself, it's going to be this more of the same. 
All right, but when you're looking at the menu itself, here we're going to get a quite interesting menu. We do have like support for many systems. We're not going to test them all out simply because the old school stuff, think about 8-bit, 16-bit stuff that runs all just fine. But I just want to see what we can do when it comes to PlayStation 1, PSP and Dreamcast. And they also mentioned somewhere Sega Saturn in the manual, but I don't see it over here. Or did I already missed it? Oh, ah, there it is. So we're going to try that one out. Let's, uh, let's take a close look at the menu itself. And I mean, this menu. Over here, we can even like mess around with the settings if you want to. So to begin with, we do have like Emi Alec 4.3 installed on this. So if this is a real Emi Alec, I'm guessing it is because it does have Sega Saturn. Pressing the wrong button again. Here we can mess around with the video mode. Here you can see it's Saturn 720p. Mm, start a boot. We can even change it out to Emi Emulation Station and Retro Arc. But again, you need to deep dive into this with a tutorial to show basically all of the options and what it is capable of. Just wanted to see out of the box what are we going to get and how does it play. Okay, so the people don't believe me, so let's take a close look at some Alien Storm for the Mega Drive, or known as Genesis by many of you. The great thing is like these freaking boxes can actually like play the Mega Drive very well. But we do have like a lot of Sega versions nowadays that have so many issues with the audio. Uh, what the hell is going on? Controller! Ah oh, man, my controller goes apeshit over here. Let's see, let's reset my controller, let's reset my controller. Alright, reset it. Ah, oh, finally, it does work. Yeah, I just wanted to show you what happened here. So, it seems to be like my controller went ape shit, but let's take a close look at the gameplay. Dead Alive 2 with Flycast, original resolution, what I understand of. Yeah, I did see him stuttering, but let's see if we can play some more. So far, so good. You can always hear like some stutters when you're bashing into the freaking wall. Alright, so next up let's try Cyber Speedway, if I'm saying it correctly. A game I personally never played as a child, so I was quite surprised to see this. For me this, so this not sound, but mostly like feels like a wipeout ripoff. Let me know in the comments, did you ever play this game? Back in the day, you can see like it glitches a little bit or it's just normal in the game. But it seems running on a pretty damn good FPS. I find it quite interesting to see like these cheap boxes are able to run Sega Saturn nowadays, but I think this will be like the maximum it can handle. And it will be mixed performance like with N64. So talking about that, so let's try a little bit of N64. Okay, so when it comes to N64, we have like some mixed performance. Funny thing is like I couldn't even test out Cruising the USA because that is a game that doesn't run on these boxes. Same like, I think it was also GoldenEye, some other really demanding ones. But you do still have like a lot of fun ones you can play. For example, Bug Bumble. Oof. But you can see like it does even struggle with this. Let's see how the gameplay is. Okay, let's see, so joystick right, left, alright, so the map that over there, same function, alright, the A is basically like acceleration, so basically when you're playing a game like this, it works very well with the PlayStation controller. Oh man, they messed it up with the PlayStation part. You can hear like the audio is not very good. 
The gameplay seems to be working just fine. The D-pad has, has a great feel for the fighting game, I almost want to say, yeah. Bonnie, there's no background music. But this needs some reconfiguration. If you ask me. But nevertheless, so basically this is what you're going to get PlayStation yet. Runs pretty damn good if you're going to set everything up like it should be. Alright, PlayStation Portable. So, you know, and I know, and especially the people basically like watching my videos all the time, you know this is not going to be running very well. Other people didn't know, now you know. I know thinking Wicked what you're talking about, she's running just great. Yeah, maybe some hiccups here and there, we can play the game. But, you know, like it has been like only already set to one times resolution. And of course frame skip. And a lot of demanding games. It's the same story like my N64, they don't run very well. Think about God of War. Okay, I wanted to do is plug out the card reader with an SD card. Let's turn it back on. I will show you the Android function or what you're basically going to get out of the box. Because that's always what it is with these things. They're slapping a new case around it, but they're just selling old school Android boxes. So in other words, if you're going to use the right configuration when it comes to a different Android box, yep, you can use the SD card. But not in every single specification when it comes to the Android box. So that is something you need to take consideration. It got this question like some time ago for somebody else's. But again, you can also like change out the boot file and basically use this thing on the GT King, for example. But when you're looking at the Android box part, so yeah, it depends what you want to do with it. It comes with the Google Play Store, which you can see over here. So we have some application, but basically like all basic application. Netflix doesn't really work great because with these rooted boxes, you can only play on 480p. So this is just a typical Android box where you need to implement all of your own games. And with gaming, you can play some basic games, but you're going to get into Asphalt, there we're going to get some issues because those, let's say, cheap boxes we're having over here, not able to run high demanding games. I know a lot of people like their down, so let's do one with this. So the first thing I'm noticing, there is no screw whatsoever. So I'm thinking I need to use my pry tool. Let's find a gap somewhere. Let's see, I did manage to find a gap before I was trying to record this. So let's see if I can basically try to get this tool in here. Let's open it up because this is have been set to a certain like standard that it has been tied up. You cannot reach it in very easily. Oh man, let's do this off camera because this is going to be a pain in the ass. All right, so I have it open for a part of it. Let's slide it this way. Let's be very gentle because I don't want to ruin the clips beneath. All right, let's see if we can see that we can already reach in very, there we go. I need to be very gentle with this. All right. Now can open up. And, aha! It's exactly what I thought it was. <laughs> Look at this. Like, they were just stacking up the thermal paste pads over here. Like, I'm just going to leave them here. But it seems to be working because this metal plate is getting really hot. So, they did put some extra effort, like putting some cooling in it. But you know what's even more stranger? So, when you're looking at over here at the PCB. So I was looking at it and I'm guessing this is the RAM chip I think thinking but when, the weird thing is like it says here 16 gigabyte. So I'm guessing this is the RAM chip of the... don't know the brand, there was no information for me like to recognize anything. But this seems to be the flash, the B-Win. Here says 16 gigabyte, I hope the camera picks it up. But it's difficult to see what kind of chip is underneath. I don't know why they did this. But they basically like glued on a metal plate. Let's see if I can lift it up a little bit. I try to force it off. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. 
need to be gentle that I'm not going to ruin my PCB and destroying my freaking board itself. But here you can see like it runs on the S905. Oh yeah, we do have seen this many, many times before. Okay guys, so yeah, this is what it comes to the specification, the inside. <laughs> Even if you can see like it's imprinted the specifications, but it's a kind of weird thing. It's like, why are they putting this extra metal on maybe to make a better connection with this? Yeah, in the end, I always like to do the tear down with the boxes just to see how they put everything together. But before I forget the mentions, like the metal plate, it's clearly like trying to rise up the chip because if you're going to put it back together, like what I just realized is that it even doesn't touch the full thermal pass. It's just on the edge over here. And I can basically like move it around if I want to now. I can say like, hey, let's move it a little bit to the bottom part, but it doesn't have like a lot of influence on the cooling. So let's put it back together. Be sure it's going to be having the cooling. Yeah. I need to turn it around. I need to turn it around. I think that, no, 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 it's completely like messed up now. Oh crap, wicked. What did I do? Uh. So we can say that another one bites the dust. And basically the reason I'm saying this is because this is one of those many boxes we have seen before. I find it just very interesting to see like how they create these things when it comes to the software part, but also when it comes to the hardware part. And yeah, the hardware is kind of laughable. They just like don't want to slap a fan in it. They just like grab the metal plate and did so like shenanigans and put this thing together. The case itself, kind of weird, there was no SD card slot on it, so yeah, the USB seems to be working just fine. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this, but thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become a wicked family, and it would be great to see you in the next video.